Our next calorimetry problem is going to involve something where we know the, the final state. It's a known final state. So what we're doing here is we're taking some steam, 10 grams of steam at 100 degrees centigrade, and mixing it with ice, 50 grams of it at minus 10 degrees centigrade, and putting it together in a bucket. And of course, the final state will be that you'll have some water in that bucket. And we're trying to find the final temperature when the ice and the steam are mixed. Now, don't ask me how you would do that, because mixing steam and ice, well, we'll figure, we would figure out how to do that. But let's say we know how, and the question is, how would you then figure out the final temperature? Well, again, since this is a calorimetry problem, we're going to set the Q gained equal to the Q lost. So start out by saying Q gained equals Q lost. As long as all the terms that go into the Q gain and the Q lost are positive, this will work. So now, what are gaining heat? Well, the ice is probably gaining heat. First of all, it needs to be brought from a state of minus 10 degrees centigrade to 0 degrees centigrade. Then it needs to be melted. And then from the 0 degrees centigrade melted water, you need to bring it up to whatever the final temperature would be. So there's three terms that will go on the left side. And then what is losing heat? Well, first of all, the steam has to condense. And then the condensed steam at 100 degrees centigrade, which is now water, hot water, will then have to cool down. So there's going to be two terms on the right side. All right, let's write down what those terms are. So we have the mc delta t of the ice as it goes from minus 10 to 0, then plus the m times the latent heat of fusion, so the ice is melting, plus the mc delta t of the cold water, which means the water, the water that was ice before that's now melted, now he needs to heat up to the final temperature. And that's going to be equal to the M latent heat of vaporization as the steam condenses into um, to water, and then plus the MC delta T of the hot water, hot H2O. Okay. All right, now the next step is to write down what these delta Ts are. So the first one is easy. It went from minus 10 to, 10 to 0, so that's a difference of 10 degrees, and you want it to be a positive quantity. So this would be MC of the ice times 10 plus... We have the M L sub F, because that's not changing, there's no delta D there, plus here we have M C of the cold water, cold H2O, times the difference in the temperature, that would be T final minus zero. So T final minus zero, because always want this to be positive quantity, and of course we didn't have to write minus zero, but just for clarity I just put it in there now. On the right side, we have M times the latent heat of vaporization of the steam turning into water, and then we have the plus mc delta t. Now, the initial temperature will be 100. The final temperature will be t final. So we write 100 minus t final. And again, the way we write this is to make sure that that quantity will be positive, which in this case it will be, since t final will probably be somewhere between 0 and 100. OK, now what we need to do is we need to somehow rewrite this equation. We have t final on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side of the equation. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of these parentheses. <clears throat> so we have a 10 times mc of the ice plus ml sub f. Uh, there we can get rid of the zero, so that's plus mc t final of the cold water. And notice how I write these subscripts there so I can keep track of what each one of these things are. Equals ml sub v. And then here we have plus 100 MC, and of course this is the hot water, right? Hot H2O. So let's write hot H2O minus MCT final of the hot H2O. All right, just want to make sure I remember what these are. So again, let's uh, circle the T finals. I have one T final here, have another T final there. So those need to end up on the left side of the equation. This one is already there. We'll move that one along with it. So we have the MC T final of the cold water, and that becomes a positive term, plus MC T final of the hot water, equals, we have the MLV, and we have the plus 100 times MC of the hot water, and then we have this term right here, that becomes a minus M latent heat of fusion, Oop, we're not done yet, uh, minus the 10 MC of the ice. Okay, next we have to factor out the T sub F, so let's do that, T sub F 
Put parentheses there and get rid of the t sub f and the t sub f. And finally, we want to divide both sides of the equation by what's inside the parentheses, minus the t sub f, of course. So then we go like this, and we plug this down here. So this would be mc of the cold water and plus the mc of the hot water. And of course, that will get rid of this thing right there, all together. And now we have t final equals that. Now we just have to plug in what those numbers are. So let's do that up here. We come up here, and we go T final is equal to the mass times the latent heat of vaporization. So here we're talking about vaporization, that means steam. We have 10 grams, and it's 540 calories per gram. I'm going to leave out the unit so it looks cleaner in the equation. Plus 100 times the mass of the hot water, that would be the same as steam, 10 grams, and of course C would be 1, minus the mass of the ice, which was 50, times the latent heat of fusion, which is 80, and minus 10 times the mass of the ice, which is now water, which is 50 grams, and the C of, ooh, yes, that's the C of ice that came from, from this one right here, so we have the C of I's is not 1, but 0 0.5. Make sure we keep that clear. And divide the whole thing by the mass of the cold water times the C of water. The mass of the cold water that came from the ice, which is 50, times the C of water, which is 1, plus the mass of the hot water, which came from steam, which is 10, times the C, which is 1. Remember, you have to make sure that you remember which mass we're dealing with and which specific heat we're dealing with. Okay, so now we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So 10 times 540 is, um, hmm, so that would be 5,400. 100 times 10 is 1,000, plus 1,000. 50 times 80 is 4,000, that's minus 4,000. And 10 times 0.5 is 5, times 5 is 250, that would be minus 250. And divide the whole thing by 50 plus 10, which is 60. Notice we can simplify things by dividing both the top and the bottom by 10, so we get rid of a zero everywhere. Makes things a little bit easier to work with. And now we have uh, 540 plus 100, which is 640, minus 400, which is 240, and minus 25, which would be, which would be 215. So this is equal to 215 divided by 6. And so finally, we grab our calculator, and we go 215 divided by 6 equals... 35.8 degrees. So T final is 35.8 degrees centigrade. And that's how you do that. Again, let's quickly review. So we took two substances, some steam, some ice, put them into a bucket. We're assuming that the ice would melt, the steam will condense, and there will be some water in the bucket at some final temperature between 0 and 100. So we, known, we pretty well knew that, so that was considered the known final state. We then write Q gain equals Q loss, and then we determine what's gaining and what's losing. The ice will be gaining, but it goes through different phases, right? So first, it's the ice heating up from minus 10 to zero. Then it's the ice melting, and then it's the cold water that's at zero degrees that then will be raised to the final temperature of 35.8, right here. On the right side, what's losing, it's the steam condensing into water. And then the hot water at 100 degrees centigrade cooling down to 35.8, which is this right here. And then we solve for T final. So first, then the next step is to take the delta T, plug in the proper delta Ts, then solve for T final, plug in the numbers, and you get the final answer. And that's how you do that.